Good evening. The situation at Japan's Fukushima nuclear plant has gotten worse. Japan's nuclear safety agency just reported an explosion has been heard at reactor unit two. It's the third explosion in four days. The explosion is feared to have damaged the reactor's pressure suppression system and put the radiation levels over the legal limit. Emergency operations to pump seawater into Unit 2 had temporarily failed, exposing its fuel rods for several hours. In all, the cooling systems at three of the plant's reactors are failing, which means the fuel rods are likely melting. Earlier in the day, a hydrogen explosion at another unit in the plant left 11 workers injured. Operators knew the seawater flooding would cause a pressure buildup, but believed they had no choice in trying to avoid a complete meltdown. New photos from Google show just how bad the aftermath is at the Fukushima nuclear plant. This is what the plant looked like from above before the tsunami hit. This is what it looks like now. While a Tokyo electric official said in a press conference that he does not believe a critical event is imminent, a senior nuclear industry executive told the New York Times that Japanese nuclear managers are, quote, basically in a full-scale panic. Fear also grips the hundreds of thousands of displaced survivors of this disaster as they face food shortages and freezing temperatures. The U.S. Geological Survey has upgraded Friday's earthquake in Japan to a 9.0. Officials estimate that at least 10,000 people were killed in the disaster. 2,000 bodies washed ashore today. At least 15,000 are still missing. President Obama spoke about the situation earlier today at the White House. Although Japan is uh, a highly advanced economy and uh, technologically equipped uh, to uh, rebuild, uh, at this moment of crisis, it's important that all of us join together in uh, providing uh, any help and assistance that we can uh, in the days and months uh, to come. Uh, and so uh, I'm in close uh, contact with Prime Minister Khan. Uh, and our teams are in close cooperation, uh, uh, as is our military uh, in the region, uh, and we expect to continue that cooperation until uh, we have uh, some stabilization of the situation there. Joining me now from Sendai, Japan, NBC's Lester Holt. Lester, do you have any new information about the explosion that has just occurred at the Fukushima plant? We can tell you it's Tuesday morning here. That occurred a little, uh, little less than three hours ago. The explosion was heard. Now, one of the Japanese wire agencies is reporting there was an increase in the radiation level shortly after that explosion. We haven't independently confirmed that. But we do know this is the same reactor in which those rods had been exposed earlier as the system to try and pump seawater in to cool the rods was failing. This apparently is happening on various levels on three reactors right now. It's amazing in what a short time suddenly we have all become versed on at least the basics of nuclear physics and none of the scenarios are good. One of the things we've noted over the last couple of days is we hear different reports from different experts, sometimes from the same agency that don't add up. The prime minister here today has moved forward to ask or to, to, to form the creation of a joint task force or a joint command between the government and the authority that operates those plants. And we've heard varying uh, reports as to how serious all this is, what a meltdown would mean with the actual container uh, that the reactors are in, would that melt through? And the various uh, uh, questions about the radioactivity. They continue to have a 12 and a half mile, I'm sorry, something's in my eye, a 12 and a half mile uh, exclusion zone around the area in which people have been largely evacuated. If they've not evacuated, they're being asked to stay inside their homes. There have been questions as to whether this uh, should be raised from the level four that it has been, excuse me, uh, the level four um, in terms of the scale of zero to seven from nuclear emergencies. The French have questioned whether this is more serious than the Japanese have let on. All this playing out while people are trying to get on with their lives and recover their lives and find their loved ones from the quake and tsunami. It's, it's kind of an odd situation that they're worrying about a nuclear disaster at the same time uh, this 
Now, search for survivors goes on. We've talked to people a short while ago who don't know where family members are, who say they're not getting food, by the way. There's no food lines here. There are some shelters set up in this area, but a lot of people are sleeping in their cars here. They're afraid to go back in. Their homes are damaged. There have been some aftershocks. Many of them uh, will quickly get your attention and give people reason to be afraid to go back in their homes. At the same time, we've seen life trying to return to normal. People are going about their business. This is a very big city. It's a city of about a million people. The area that was hit by the tsunami, hard to get an estimate, but it, it certainly didn't encompass the entire city. But when you go to those areas, you'll be going down a normal street, everything's fine, and then you'll see areas that have been flattened, cars turned upside down. Those are not emergency sirens for tsunamis. Those are just fire trucks. They've been coming back and forth all day. Uh, fire trucks, agencies from all over Japan, as well as internationally gathered here, going out in big convoys into areas to begin to look for victims. So many areas still untouched here uh, that they haven't gotten to. So it's we hear these numbers of, of tens of thousands of people perhaps missing. In some cases, they may be cut off. But the fact is, we really don't know. Lester, what can the, the victims of this disaster do about the possible radiation exposure? Certainly they, they might want to move as far away from these nuclear plants as they can at this time, but is there any ability to do that? Well, that's a good question because fuel is, is very hard to come by. We drove up from Tokyo overnight. Um, cars were being turned away uh, that didn't have special permits. We were able to get a special permit to go on what was the equivalent of a toll road. Uh, but even those folks who could get in a car, there was no gas for them. So when we were leaving rush hour in Tokyo, uh, this, this huge city that is uh, notorious for its big traffic jams, very few cars on the road. That plays against those people who are trying to get out of these areas. And people are also, you know, I said we're all becoming amateur uh, nuclear f physicists. We don't know what we don't know about uh, radioactivity and how far it travels. The government here says 12 and a half miles is the zone. They believe that's safe. Uh, but we're all aware of the wind shifts. We're aware that uh, eight uh, U.S. warships uh, encountered some radio radioactivity that were off the coast uh, of, the, uh, of Japan earlier. They've now moved to a safer area. Not a big dose, but it reminds you that it is out there and people really don't know what to do and have very few options to get out of here. NBC's Lester Holt, thanks for your, thanks for your report tonight, Lester.